Hi, this is Tag again, and today I have another random purchase on the table. Now this thing I found listed as thermal tag case, and well, I asked the guy if whatever is in there is included, and he said yes. Whole thing was 20 bucks, so I saw six memory slots. Uh, I saw the black PCB, I obviously knew it is not going to be a Rampage 3 black because of the Nippon Camicon caps on here. Uh, so, the blue ones. It's a EVGA board, so let's take it apart and see what CPU we got. Now my bet is on a i7-920. But at least we can hope for a good batch, I guess. Also, maybe the board works, in which case it should have been worth it. Also there's some sort of, uh, I think it's a uh, funnel right cooler as well. Pretty big, double tower. I think 140 millimeter. No, not that I need a cooler, I have way too many air coolers all the time. And yeah, it's wrong screws. Of course it is. It's always wrong screws. This is, by the way, a EVGA X58 uh, SLI3, so it be a rather late board, which might actually support Xeons, I'm not sure. Most of the EVGA boards don't without mods, at least. And even with mods, it's not really good with Xeons. I think we need to take off the fans. Yeah, 140 millimeter. And then get this monstrosity of a case off the table. Okay, I think I got everything. Yeah, except for the one screw that doesn't fit, obviously. Okay, there we are. I don't think I'm going to use this board for anything besides maybe testing something or just selling it on. It was mostly because I was kind of in the mood for a gamble on a unknown CPU. And usually enthusiast looking stuff has a chance to have some extreme editions in there. That's just from my experience from stuff from the recycler. Now this is obviously not from the recycler. This is just a local marketplace pickup. Let's see. Thermo takes strange little mounting thing. I think there is a, I don't know if you can see it, there is a one big nut in the middle. But I don't, I think that's the way you tighten it down. But we're going to just take it off completely. Yeah. And what do we have? Let's see. This is a, well it's a 950, but it's a 2010 950, so it's garbage. So let's throw this thing on the bench next, I think, and just see if it posts. I'm going to collect all the mounting hardware because then I can at least sell the cooler for five bucks. The last thing I need is another air cooler. Actually have to go through the whole bin of air coolers someday and just chuck out a bunch of them again. There we are. Now let's see you at the bench. 
Okay, here we are. Let's turn on the power supply. We already got a blue light, so at least we don't have a short on 5 VSB. Let's turn it on and see if we got lucky. There is a postcode. F3, F6, it cycles something. C1, C3, that looks decent. Yes, I think this worked. And we got something on the screen at least. Nice. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do much testing on this board because I already have a, here you can see it again, uh, X58 SLI 3, because I already have a classified 3, which is basically the best X58 um, EVGA board. And even that one is less than optimal with the Xeons. Uh, mostly due to problems with setting uncore, at least on lock chips. So this thing is unfortunately probably not really usable for anything besides, well, core i7s and maybe um, 45 nanometer Xeons because those are also locked on, well, uncore is locked on other boards too. Except for the Rampage uh, boards, there is some quirk where you can unlock Uncore and memory multis. But yeah, this is basically a, a pure consumer board. EVGA unfortunately never really bothered with proper Xeon support, unlike Asus or Gigabyte. And some other manufacturers as well, of course. Uh, so but mostly Asus and Gigabyte. Anyways, I guess this gamble sort of paid off. Uh, wasn't really much of a gamble anyways, because I mean, it was more of a, well, me wanting to hope for a Extreme Edition i7, but obviously those are super rare. And even when you buy sort of enthusiast looking stuff. It's obviously a 920 in, in 90% of the cases and like 5% of the cases it's a 950 and then the rest is some other garbage like i9, uh, i7 9 i7 930s or extreme editions in really rare cases. Anyways, that's it for this little uh, purchase of mine. I think I will add some other stuff here Okay, here we are. This time another terrible packing job it seems and a bit of a surprise uh, to me as well. This is some sort of 939 board that I have no idea exactly what CPU is on there and what memory and so on. I just hope it didn't get destroyed totally in shipping. Surprisingly there is some padding in here. There is like corners of the board poking out of the box. Yeah. Well, less than optimal. I think it survived. Now obviously no ESD bag or anything, but that's too much to expect honestly from like 90% of people shipping hardware. I just got this because it was listed just as a motherboard and uh, asked if the stuff on the picture was in there. Doesn't seem like those are any good. Those are version 4.4. I was hoping there would be something, something nice, but yeah. There are 1 gig sticks and C3. I of course I see 2 sticks. Even in one gigabyte version. Now let's see what we got for CPU. Now this MSI board is probably not that terrible either. It's a uh, Nforce 4. One of the ones I've wanted to test for a while now. I have the like black PCB one. Now I have the red one as well. Let's hope this is something interesting. Not just another 3200. 
cooler doesn't really give me too much hope. Holy shit! We got an FX. I mean, a terrible FX, but it's an FX. So I just got to FX on the MSI board. What the hell? I expected something like a 3200, but uh, I will take take a FX53 any day. I mean, it's not a good FX still, but FX nonetheless. So this will be fun. Hopefully this thing posts. This is the next thing I'm going to show you now. These here are pretty much a gamble. I think I'm just going to put them for a couple bucks on eBay. Maybe I recoup the 10 euros I paid for the board and bundle. Should be definitely possible. Because as far as I know, collectors like these LED thingies. I don't, personally. I prefer some normal silver heat spreader ones. Hopefully with some BH5s, but eh, what can you do? I mean, the FX is already more luck than really should. And I really should have with this. So let's get this over to the bench and see if it posts. Okay, so I put everything sort of together. Okay, it turns on right with the power supply. Seems to post. Yes! And we got our FX53 and two gigs of memory. Going to BIOS, you stupid thing. Detecting ID drives, you won't find any. Looks good. Now, I'm not sure if the sticks are supposed to do that, but I think one of them is not properly working. Or maybe it is actually, I am not sure. But regardless, we got a working FX and a N4 scoreboard, sort of mediocre N4 scoreboard probably, but still for 10 bucks plus shipping, but that's like 5 euros extra, so pretty good deal I would say. Now I have two claw hammer FX's, great. What I'm going to do now with them? I'm not sure. <laughs> Bin FX's I guess, no actually I'm keeping both because the other one is the 55, so. Yeah, anyways, this was probably the best possible outcome of this deal, I would say. So yeah, pretty happy. Okay, it's another day and well, I got me some more toys. Let's start off with this box here. Uh, this should be, I think, a P4C800. Again, one of those boards where I have no idea what CPU or memory or anything is on there. But yeah, yep, there we are. P4C800. That's an interesting cool copper in the middle, I guess. Or is this just aluminum with uh, like paint on it? What do we have here? Nothing special. I mean, it's a TCCC, but still. Not really anything special. Let's get this cooler off here. It's an interesting mounting mechanism. This thing should at least be better than a stock cooler, I guess. Seems to have a lot of surface area. Now, what do we have? Just a 3 gigahertz northward. Not sure if you can see. This is... Come on. Focus. Ah, 3 gigahertz off-wood chip. Absolutely nothing special. 
But we got another P4C800. Putting in the CPU the wrong way around. Now this is the, the vanilla P4C800. But it's still uh, a 975 uh, chipset, so better than a P4P. And I'm, I'm slowly collecting these things, so I have uh, a couple of them to bin for, for FSB, because usually I'm not really lucky with uh, 478 boards. Uh, I know I could just use the adapter, obviously, but yeah. Not for, for competitions and stuff, there you need a, a native uh, 478 board, so trying to find a good, good P4C, basically. Anyways, let's move on to something a bit more interesting. I think this should be a dual socket F board. Now it's not the the L1 N64, the famous one, but rather a Opteron board. doesn't look too good but I think that should be fine. What the hell is this cooler on here? I saw them on a picture but I didn't expect them to be this heavy. How do you open these schools? Okay. Cool guys. Now this is a ASUS board that in theory should have overclocking options in BIOS and it obviously supports Opterons. There's actually uh, quad-core Opterons on here currently. Well, according to the cell at least, we're going to see in a minute. And, well, as you probably know by now, I like server CPUs. Uh, both Opterons as well as as Xeons. So that's kind of my my world of of overclocking because it's well it's obviously stuff that was never designed to be overclocked so it's it's twice the fun because you're not going to get any product specifically designed for overclocking and that makes it a bit more challenging. So this is a, a twenty three. 50, you already saw it, 23, 56, so those are indeed quad-core chips. So we have two quad-cores on here. I hope. <laughs> uh, nah, it should be two quad-cores. And we have these, these surprisingly massive heat sinks. Uh, the thing is easily like 800 grams or something. It's a massive copper slug in the middle. I thought it would be just some cheap as aluminium cooler, but nope. That's nice. No, not that I really need air coolers, but no, I have some, I guess. I'm I'm obviously going to try to run something cold on here, though it's probably not gonna happen because what the hell did they do to the screw? Uh. Because K8 has terrible cold bugs, so <clears throat> and I'm planning on running mostly dual cores. I'm actually not sure if the quad cores on here are based on the same architecture as the phenom, uh, the original phenoms, because those also were cold bugging quite a bit. Uh, if they are based on on something like DNAP, obviously I'm going to be happy. 
and well they will run decent logs. Let's actually have a look at the memory. Those are Hynix. I mean those those things won't clock at all. Have a look. They are focus. I'm I'm going to have to buy some some different uh ECC DDR2 for this. Four gigabyte uh PC2 3200. So uh, 400 megahertz DDR2 massive S chips and 4 gigabyte sticks. So those are worthless trash. But well, it's it's 32 gigabytes of worthless trash, and I paid 40 euros for this board. So I guess it's not too bad. Probably can sell the memory or something. Actually, probably not. It's not. Uh, it's not desktop memory. This stuff, I mean. This would be the stuff you can sell, because people want it, but uh, this is obviously my own 16 gigabyte kit in case in any competition in the future uh, there is a use of of having 16 gigs on, of memory on a DDR2 platform. Uh, also doesn't clock well, but at least it's uh, 800 megahertz. And it runs on Intel, which is rather nice. But this stuff here is, uh, yeah, probably trash. But I will find some good 800 megahertz DDR2 somewhere. I'm sure of that. Turn this up. Actually, let's let's see if this thing works and let's show you what BIOS looks like. I guess. Uh, I don't have too much hope for like. A lot of options, but it should look the same as a uh, as my my Asus K8 NPL. That's the, the Socket 940 dual uh, board from Asus, and this is well, this is just the, the Socket F version, basically. A uh, bit newer, obviously, too, and it also has aluminum polymers on the VRMs, which I find really nice. Also, four-phase VRM, so. It should be fine even with the quad words, I guess. Maybe we have a bit of airflow on here, but honestly, it doesn't look too bad. For a server bot, that is. Anyways, uh, I will show you this thing working at the bench, hopefully. And I will also give the, the P4C800 a quick test. Uh, might show you that as well. Okay, first of the P4C800 now. I just have a random stick of Corsair in here. Not the original memory, but I don't care about that. Anyways, so looks good. 38 means we are here. So this board is alive. Not really surprising to be honest. These things are pretty robust and it was actually one of the better, actually one of the best shipping jobs I've seen in the like past couple months. So good stuff. P4C800 works. Now let's move on to the more interesting one. Okay, here we are. Now I put on the the uh, Thermotech coolers again, just to test it. Uh, and I noticed it only has one 8-pin EPS. So there is somewhere in this board a 12 volt power plane all the way down here. I'm not sure that's a good thing. I might just solder another 8-pin on this. Actually. I think this is the input joke. Yes, this is should be no bridge order. So might just plug this out and put a eight pin here. Just to not yep, it just turns on. Okay. D3. D3 means it doesn't like memory. I'm not surprised with 32 gigs. So yeah, I'm going to just plug out like hey, it's posted, it just takes ages, obviously. Okay, we are posting. 32 gigs of memory, yeah. Uh no. <laughs> I have to change something about the jumble free configuration. We have CPU frequency. Let's see how far it goes. 210 megahertz, great. Uh, Clock gen should work because this is a Enforce chipset and Enforce has internal clock gens and well Enforce Pro should be 
more or less the same as the 680i that the uh, L1N64 is based on. So I, I, I'm not too worried right now, but there might be a bit of a problem. Let's see what we have for voltages. Okay, it needs volt mods. <coughs> what does it need for memory? I have no idea. I just need to get some some better memory first, but it also probably needs volt mods because two volts is a bit low for DDR2 to be honest. That doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have. That's also nice to have. I'm not sure what they mean by HTT voltage. I guess that's the internal north bridge or IMC rather of the TCPUs. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, we have this here and let's see what we have for uh, memory. We're on timing mode, uh, manual. Okay, we have clocks, TCT zero. We have some sort of, I'm not sure what they mean by TCT zero and TCT one. But we have some sort of timings here. Uh, we can go up to DDR2 uh, 400 megahertz. And we have timing, so that's decent, I would say. ECC, we can disable ECC. That might mean. Actually, let's turn this off and let's give it a quick test with regular DDR2 and see what happens. Okay, I put in some Mushkin. Red lines, and those are both uh, 1000 megahertz kits, but let's see what happens. D9 based, obviously. D3, now we know it takes a while. D5, I have something happening. I don't think it likes regular old DDR2. So I have another idea. Let's try next some non registered ECC. Uh, DDR2 with microns. Okay, I got some 1 gig uh, D9GKX based uh, microns in here. Let's turn it on. Let's see what this says. Seems to be bootloading. Yeah, that's not working either. Okay, next order of business, I think, is removing one CPU and just testing one stick on memory on one socket and see if I can find the type of memory that I... Okay, so I removed one CPU and I only have one memory stick here. Let's turn it on. Kind of useful that this thing turns on automatically. I think the BIOS battery is empty. Same boot loop, let's try a different slot. Let's try the black slot. I have no idea, I didn't read any manuals or anything, so no idea what the right slots are, just testing stuff. But D5 looks good. But it still doesn't post. Hmm. I get the feeling that this thing needs registered and doesn't run with regular old ECC non-registered stuff. Turn it off. I don't have any registered DDR2 on hand right now. At least not any good ones. I have the ones that came with the board obviously. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Unless I'm running the wrong memory bank. That just should be from a layout point of view should be CPU1, uh, DIMM A2, DIMM B2, DIMM B1, yeah I think that's the right one. And oh. Try a different stick I guess, but I don't really have much hope, try the blue slot. I don't think this is going to work.
Yeah, this, this slot is just boot looping. And in the black slots, it's going to give us D5. So, time to find some registered stick stat clock, I guess. Yep, nope, nothing working. That's not what do we have here? FM CPU 1, no idea. Uh, maybe I will get this to work, but I have my doubts right now. Yeah, I think this is not going to work with uh, unbuffered or non registered rather memory. Anyways, uh, at least the board itself works, so I have num something now I can overclock, hopefully overclock by more than 10 megahertz, uh, socket F opterons on. Anyways, that's it, bye.